Hello, myself Dr. Shubha Maria. The topic of my presentation is MRI evaluation of intradural extramedullary spinal tumor. The spinal cord is the part of the central nervous system that is found within the spinal canal of the vertebral column. The cord extends from the corticomedullary junction at the foramen magnum of the skull down to the tip of conus medullaris. The spinal cord is covered by three layers of meninges from outer to inner. They are the dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater. In this image, we can see this one is the spinal cord and this outer one, dark blue, is the dura mater. The orange color represents the lesion. In this case, we can see this orange colored lesion is located within the spinal cord. So it is intramedullary. In this image, we can see the orange color lesion. It is located outside the spinal cord and it is, it is compressing the cord. But it is within the dura mater. So it is intradural extramedullary lesion. In this image, we can see the lesion lies outside the dura mater. So it is extradural lesion. On the basis of the location of the spinal tumor, they can be divided into intradural or extradural. Amongst extradural, metastasis are the most common ones. In intradural, again, it can be divided into intramedullary and extramedullary. Intramedullary are the ones those are located within the spinal cord and extramedullary are the ones which are located outside the spinal cord. Overall, intradural extramedullary spinal tumors are the most common ones. Intradural extramedullary tumors are located inside the dura but outside the spinal cord. They might develop from nerve roots or from inside surface of the dura matter. Many tumors and the nerve sheet tumors make up the majority of the intradural extramedullary tumors. All spinal levels may be involved. All lesions can be single or multiple. However, paraganglioma is often single. Lesion causes widening of the CSF spaces and they cause compression of the spinal cord. Among various intradural extramedullary lesions, schwannoma and meningioma are the most common ones, other being neurofibroma, leptomeningeal metastasis, myxopapillary ependymoma, paraganglioma, hematoma, dermoid, and epidermoid. Patients usually present with the signs and symptoms of spinal cord or nerve root compression. And the common presentation include weakness, localized back pain, radicular pain, sensory deficit, and gait ataxia. The diagnostics include MRI, including contrast enhancement, CT for bone window with reconstruction, and possible CT myelogram. However, the modality of choice is contrast enhanced MRI. And the preferred treatment in most of these cases is microsurgical radical resection. Now, our first case is a 38 year female who presented with a complaint of neck pain since one year, which was radiating to bilateral upper limb and is associated with tingling and numbness. In these images, we can see a well defined intradural extramedullary lesion with a broad base towards dura matter, with a, which shows uh, dural tail sign. This is a T1 sagittal images in which the lesion appears iso to hyper intense to the cord. In this T2 sagittal and T2 axial image, we can see the lesion appears iso to hyper intense to the cord with T2 peripheral hyper hypo intense rim. Also, blooming was noted on the medic sequence, which denotes calcification. These are the post contrast images, sagittal section, coronal section, and axial section, which shows intense homogeneous enhancement of the lesion. This lesion span from the lower border of T4 vertebra to the lower border of T5 vertebra and no evidence of extension into the bilateral neural foramina was noted. So on the basis of the imaging finding, the diagnosis of spinal meningioma was made. Now our next case is a 15 year male who presented with complaint of neck pain since one year radiating to right upper limb associated with numbness. However, no history of fever was present. On ENT examination, right palatal palsy and right vocal cord palsy was present. In these images, we can see intradural extramedullary mark with broad base towards dura. However, no dural tail sign is noted. The lesion is located one at C6, T1 vertebral level and other one is at C1, C2 vertebral level. This is T1 sagittal section where the lesion appears iso to hypo intense to spinal cord. In T2 sagittal image, we can see the lesion appear heterogeneously hyper intense to spinal cord. And this in diffusion weighted, we can see the restriction. In the post contrast images, this is coronal section and this sagittal section, we can see the lesion shows homogeneous contrast enhancement. Also, the CMRI brain of the patient was done, and we found that there was a solid mass lesion with intracanalicular extension in bilateral cerebellopontine angle, which suggests bilateral CPA schwannoma. So, along with the various spinal schwannoma and bilateral CPA schwannoma, the diagnosis of neurofibromatosis type 2 was made. Our next case is a 24-year-old male who presented with the complaints of pain in the lower back with radiation to right lower limb since 1.5 years, which was with progressive weakness, numbness, and tingling sensation of bilateral lower limb. 
occasional bladder incontinence was present there was no history of bowel involvement on examination vitals were stable motor and sensory examination was normal rest of the neurological and other systemic examination was within normal limit patient is a post operative follow up case of mixopapillary ependymoma in these images we can see a well defined intradural extramedullary lesion involving the conus medullaris and phylum terminal and extending from the lower border of l2 to the lower border of l3 vertebral level the lesion appears hyper intense on t1 image and this on t2 sagittal image we can see the lesion appears heterogeneously iso to hyper intense and it shows mild diffusion restriction on post contrast images sagittal section coronal section and the axial section we can see the lesion shows homogeneous contrast enhancement however no hemorrhage or extension of the lesion into the nodal foramina was noted as this is a known case of mixopapillary ependymoma and it is a post operative case so the final diagnosis was made as recurrent or residual mixopapillary ependymoma a next case is a 9 year old girl who is a post op case of medulloblastoma for which she received radiotherapy also now she presented with a complaint of difficulty in walking in these images we can see diffuse leptomeningeal thickening and enhancement with multiple nodular enhancing lesions in the surface of the cervical dorsal and lumbar spinal cord from c3 to l1 vertebral level in t1 sagittal image lesion appears iso to hypo intense so it is very difficult to see the lesion in just t1 images in t2 section sagittal section we can see the lesion appears hyper intense and Oh, on diffusion restriction uh, diffusion images we can see the lesion shows diffusion restriction this is a post contrast image where the lesion shows nodular enhancement so the diagnosis of leptomeningeal drop metastasis was made now to start with the discussion first is meningioma meningiomas are often located posterior laterally in the thoracic region and anteriorly in the cervical region mostly they are solitary lesion multiple meningiomas are often associated with nf2 on imaging plain film meningiomas uh, plain films appears normal and really bone erosion or calcification may be seen on non contrast ct we will see isodense or moderately hyperdense mass lesion hyperostosis may be seen but it is not as common as in the intracranial meningiomas calcification may be present on mri the meningioma appears as well circumscribed broad based dural attachment which is dural tail sign on t1 they appear iso intense to slightly hypo intense and may have heterogeneous texture on t2 they appear iso intense to slightly hyper intense and on contrast they show moderate homogeneous enhancement occasionally densely calcified meningiomas are hypo intense on t1 and t2 and show only minimal contrast enhancement the spinal meningiomas are typically slow growing and surgery is the treatment of choice for them less than 10% experience recurrence the differential diagnosis for it are the nerve sheet tumors that is the spinal schwannoma and the spinal neurofibroma next we have the nerve sheath tumors which are schwannomas and neurofibromas schwannomas are more common while the neurofibromas generally occur in association with nf1 malignant degeneration of the neurofibroma may occur in patient with nf1 but schwannoma rarely undergo malignant transformation approximately 50% of the nerve sheath tumors are intradural extradural that is they are dumbbell shaped and 50% are purely extradural both masses are slow growing and cause bone remodeling and both show low t1 and high t2 signal cystic spaces and hemorrhage are more common in schwannomas than in neurofibromas both may show homogeneous or inhomogeneous contrast enhancement but neurofibromas they typically have a ring shape or the target type of enhancement in which the central portion of the mass remains slightly hypointense after contrast administration schwannomas are actually slow growing lesions but can be debilitating they almost never undergo malignant transformation and surgery is the treatment of choice gross total dissection is usually curative for the patient with sporadic tumors for patient with nf2 there is high incidence of new tumor formation now moving to next which is mixopapillary ependymoma most frequent type of ependymomas which are found at the conus medullaris cauda equina and phylum terminal level are the mixopapillary ependymoma they thought to arise from the ependymal glial of the phylum terminal and they manifest with a low back pain sacral pain or the weakness or sphincter dysfunction on imaging they appears as globulated sausage shaped mass that are often encapsulated on t1 they are usually iso intense which is a finding that reflects mucin content on the hemorrhage of the lesion on t2 they overall appears hyper intense low intensity may be due to the hemorrhage calcification can also lead to regions of low signal and they always shows contrast enhancement 
typically homogeneous however can be variable due to the hemorrhage they are slow growing who grade 2 tumors occasionally csf dissemination and multiple lesions are seen some sacred lesions are locally aggressive and metastasize to lymph node lungs and bones aggressive behavior of the lesion is more commonly seen in case of children they can often be excised completely with excellent prognosis with a 5 year survival rate of 98% if the tumor has extended to the conus medullaris this section is often incomplete with a greater risk of local recurrence and there is a greater risk of neurologic deficit this is what we saw in our case of mixopapillary ependymoma and for differential diagnosis if the lesion is small then we can differential uh, diagnosis could be schwannoma and the paraganglioma if the lesion is large and it is causing destruction of the sacrum then the lesion could be anezoal bone cyst chordoma or the giant cell tumor next we have is a leptomeningeal metastasis they are frequently seen in the setting of a solid tumor the most common ones are melanoma a small cell lung cancer and the breast cancer and in hematologic malignancy in children the most common intradural extramedullary neoplasm is the drop metastasis from the primary brain tumor and among which the most common one is medulloblastoma uh, as we saw in our case in adults the non cns tumors are the most commonly encountered ones however in case of the cms the most common drop metastases are from the glioblastoma in mri in non contrast mri it is very difficult to pick a lesion so that may appear normal thus whenever suspected contrast should be administered and typical characteristic findings in the mri are on t1 it will appear thick and nerve root with nodular lesions that are iso intense with the spinal cord on t2 we will see the cord edema may be present with more extensive disease especially if there is intra medullary component on contrast there will be enhancing tumor nodules on the spinal cord nerve root or the cord equina and the sugar coating of the spinal cord and the nerve root is seen on, uh, the treatment and prognosis of the leptomeningeal metastasis is actually poor and it depends on the primary tumor no surgical cure is possible and the treatment results around the systemic chemotherapy and radiotherapy to the neuraxis for differential diagnosis if the if there is diffuse disease then differential could be meningeal radiculitis arachnoiditis and gullian bar syndrome if there is a nodular disease it could be spinal meningioma spinal schwannoma neurofibroma or pyel lipoma so the summary and conclusion of my presentation contrast enhanced mri is the modality of choice to fully characterize these masses and the relationship of the masses to the cord the dura the nerve roots in addition mri can help in identify secondary lesions and a large feeding and the draining vessels if they are present various distinguishing feature of the lesions are in meningioma we will see the dural involvement with a dural tail sign homogeneous contrast enhancement and the jinko leaf sign jinko leaf sign is actually used to distinguish between the spinal tumor that is spinal meningioma from a neurogenic tumor that is spinal schwannoma uh, it is seen on the axial post contrast even imaging in which the leaf represent the distorted spinal cord pushed to one side of the thecal sac by the meningioma and the stem is seen as non enhancing streak probably representing the stress denticulate ligament in the nerve sheet tumor the we see the nerve root involvement extra dural neural phenomena extension with dumbbell appearance of the lesion the schwannomas are actually rounded or oval in shape they show marked due to hyper intensity and heterogeneous cystic changes when they are large and they displace the nerve root whereas neurofibromas are actually fusiform or flexiform in shape they show marked due to hyper intensity and they encase the nerve root leptomeningeal metastasis in this we will see the spinal cord margins or the nerve root involvement especially the cord equina with multifocal nodular enhancement mixopapillary ependymoma usually involves the cord equina region and the lesion appears chaussee shaped in morphology the neuroendocrine tumors that is paraganglioma cord equina region is involved with prominent flow void is seen also the capsaicin is seen capsaicin is actually the uh, t2 hypo intensity above or below the lesion which is due to the previous hemorrhage and that is due to the hemosiderin deposit so the preferred treatment in all these cases mostly is the microsurgical radical resection these are my references thank you